What about much longer sentences? We want to have a continuous chat with a virtual chatbot, like a virtual girlfriend. And how do we prevent it from uh, forgetting your stuff or getting out of memory? So uh, those are the streaming applications um, uh, where you want to run these multi-round dialogues with very long interactions, right? So conventional method, right, using the transformer um, and also windowed uh, attention, you can see uh, using a naive transformer, the, as the input sequence length gets longer, the memory grows linearly. So a natural approach is, uh, although the memory is growing, that doesn't mean it's working well, because if it is exceed your contact, your training context length, the perplexity is going to hike, it's going to break. Okay, so after here, like 4K, where the training window size is 4K, the model quality is getting very bad. What if you use a window? Right? Can we just use a window uh, so that we can uh, use a limited amount of memory? So if you use window attention, that's the uh, green part. Uh, although the memory stays constant since we're using a window, see the perplexity suddenly broke when um, your sentence length exceeds the window length. Why is that? Because when the sentence length exceeds the window length, the first token will be evicted. And in this paper, we find the first couple of tokens are super crucial. We call it attention sync. You cannot evict them from the KV cache. Versus this streaming LM, um, the memory is constant and also the perplexity is pretty low, all the way to this is 10K. Actually, we measured all the way up to 4 million. So this is the video demo without streaming LM versus with streaming LM. First model breaks, performance breaks, and then it becomes out of memory. While streaming LM, the model continues functioning for QA, 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 continuous functioning uh, without being stopped. So there are two uh, critical uh, failures. One is model performance breaks, perplexity breaks. The other is out of memory. So let's see how do we solve those two problems. A natural approach to prevent it from uh, being out of memory is to just using a window for window attention. Right? For every token, you just look at the here window size of four. Just look at four elements ahead of you rather than looking at everything in front of you. Okay? So in this case, the perplexity is um, T times L. So L is the number of cached tokens. T is the number of total tokens. Okay? So every time um, the, you have to calculate um, L, and then you have to calculate T times. Why the, that's why the perplexity, the complexity is TL, but the perplexity is huge. Perplexity is huge. As long as when um, we exceed the KV, the, the, the size of the KV cache size, even when you're exceeding the window, the first token will be evicted, and then the model will break. Another approach um, is the original approach, the dense attention, everything you calculate, everything ahead of you. The complexity is OT square area of this blue region. But the perplexity is big because you exceeded your training length. At training time, you have never seen such long number of tokens, therefore it failed. And this is training attention, it failed. The only way that works is by recomputing getting rid of the KV cache, everything that is computed from scratch, as if this token is the first token. You recompute the KV cache. So this area um, is actually L square. I've computed T times complexity is T L square. So although the perplexity is low, computation is just high, cannot afford it. So what the interesting phenomenon we find is actually the first token is just so important. A lot of attention to the after layer two. Many other layers randomly sampled there have a big attention to the first token. So the initial token have huge attention stores, even if they are not sem semantically significant. And we call it a uh, attention sink. So those tokens are disproportionately 
receive such a high attention irrespective of their semantics. And why? Uh, and also, we actually observed this three years ago when we are publishing the Spaten paper in HPCA 2021. Um, for example, this sentence, he is a very famous researcher in the computer architecture era, area. And the new token papers uh, append very heavily to the first token, he, but he actually doesn't have much semantic meaning. In the second example, when we are having that paper, that one, at that time, we are still using GPT-2 in late 20, in the fall of 2020, GPT-2 for language modeling. And we are doing a progressive token pruning, like Du Fu is a great poet of the Tang Dynasty. Uh, recently, a variety style that have been used in efforts, blah, blah. And actually, it tend to prune Fu was a great poet, etc. right? Why prune Fu, not Du? That doesn't make sense. And actually, because Du is the first uh, sync token, that's the attention sync. So we've observed this phenomenon like three years ago, but not until today. We figure out and have a, have a deeper understanding why that's the case. It's actually due to the softmax function. In the softmax, it has to sum up to one, probability has to sum up to one. Even if some of the tokens are not quite important, it doesn't necessarily have to attend to each other, but the tension score must sum up to one for all the contextual tokens. So the initial token is special. Um, it has the advantage being the sync due to uh, it's the first one. All the subsequent tokens will attend to the first token due to the auto regressive manner. Um, therefore, uh, the word being predicted all attend to the first token. So, since the softmax has to sum up to one, if something is not quite related, they just decided the neural network just decided to dump. All the attention scores to the first token, and that's the attention sync hypothesis. And we try to see whether it's the position that matters or the semantics that matters. So we try to replace the sync token with just slash n, which is a line break, doesn't have any meaning. But we find actually it performs function almost as well as using the uh, for uh, original token as the attention sync much better than doesn't have any attention sync, which is showing that the um, position matters, the first four tokens the position matters, not the semantic, even replacing with line break still works. Very interesting phenomenon. Therefore, our solution is just to add back the first column as always, just always keep the attention sync, okay, and then do window the attention later. So we are generating token seven. Um, assume the size of your uh, KV cache is eight. Now everything is a KV cache. When you are generating token eight, we keep the attention sinks, or in this case, skip four, and then using a rolling window manner for the remaining tokens. And don't forget to change the positional encoding. Um, well, this is the attention sync, evicted token, rolling KV cache. We want to have the um, relative position in the KV cache rather than the original uh, uh, absolute po uh, location position. So the positional encoding would be 0, 1, 2, 3. And then here is 4, it's not 6. So that's the only thing we need to change. And the integration with streaming LM with the page, the attention, the VLM is very simple. Just to pin the first page. In the KV cache, never evict the first page of the KV cache. Certainly, it will introduce a little bit of overhead since you actually just need to pin like four tokens, but a page maybe 16 tokens, but it's very easy to implement. Just pin the first page in the page attention and then change the positional encoding, and then you have the VLM integrated with streaming LM. Actually, they already did the in integration. In the past two weeks, which is super exciting. So now we can uh, compare the dense attention with window attention, with sliding window with uh, attention with recomputation versus streaming LM. Uh, previously, the window attention breaks when the length is greater than the KV cache size, since the first sync token is evicted. 
And for the dense attention, the performance breaks once the length is longer than your pre-trained uh, window size versus uh, this recomputation, uh, sliding window with recomputation versus streaming LM, they can both well maintain the perplexity. They pretty much overlap, so you cannot tell the difference having very low perplexity. But why not recomputation? There's a huge amount of computing overhead. So, and also we tested all the way up to four million tokens. That's very long and didn't stop, stop working. So, uh, the model for different models, Llama 2, 7B, 13B, 70B, different models work consistently well all the way to like 4 million tokens and didn't stop. So now we compare with the only working baseline, which is sliding window width recomputation. Just get rid of the KV cache, recompute KV each time. Actually, we can make it um, reduce the latency from 1,400 to only 65 more than 20x speed up compared with that baseline. Um, saving the memory and also works quite well for different models. So how many attention sinks is needed? Previously we mentioned four, but why is that the case? Uh, we tried different um, configurations, like without the, KVK, uh, without the attention sink, keep the zero tokens in the front, the model the perplexity exploded. One attention sink, 11, two attention sink, 10, four attention sink, nine, and the eight attention sink doesn't quite help. So that begins to plateau between four and eight. So we decided to use four tokens as the number of the attention sinks. But this still seems to be an arbitrary number. Why four attention sinks? If we have the um, luxury to train the model ourselves, can we train a large language model that only one need one single attention sink with one dedicated attention sink. Okay. So we train the models from scratch in, by introducing an extra learnable token at the start of all the training samples okay, to act as a dedicated attention sink. And this is the uh, comparing the vanilla versus plus the sync token. Um, the pre-training loss is actually, actually a little bit better in this case, although this is a pretty small model, we have to verify that on a larger model, and call for collaboration here. Um, to verify adding this attention sync actually can also reduce the training loss for larger models. Um, this is showing the uh, cache config with only one attention sync. If we have the luxury to train the model from scratch using a learnable, dedicated learnable sync, only one token can match the performance with a pre-trained model that requires four tokens. So this is just population studies showing that four is, as it looks like, to, uh, looks like a random number. Actually, we can use uh, pre-training to have only one dedicated sync token. But even if in that case, the sync token is crucial because without the sync token, the perplexity will explode. Later, people also verified this idea on the Mistral model. Remember, Mistral model is trained with windowed attention. So at times time, still attention sync phenomena is required. 